Ready? Be safe, thank you. That was probably the nicest Uber driver I've ever had. Headed on a quick flight to San Francisco now, going to a real estate event. I'm also going to be talking at said real estate event. And yeah, let me see how we check in here. Cutting it kind of close. I have a good looking line here. So if you would have asked me years ago if I would speak on stage, I would have thought that was ridiculous and have been petrified and would have no way ever done it. So even now, I'm definitely quite scared. The, uh, you know, the version of me that I want to be is that person that will speak up on stage, that will help others, that will push past the fears that you know, many of us have on a regular basis. Um, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, you are not the same person that you are. Uh, now than you were when you were six months ago. I mean, if you're actively investing, we're constantly changing and developing skills and, you know, getting tougher and tougher and more life experiences kind of thrown at us. It's a crash course, you know, in dealing with people on a regular basis. When you're setting your goals 12 months in the future, five years in the future, make it so that you don't know how you're going to get there. You haven't met the people yet. Uh, you haven't developed the skills yet uh, that you need to be that person that you want to be. So when you are making goals, you know, make them big. Hi. Cool. Thank you very much. Have you seen that emotions movie from, I think, Disney or Pixar, where, you know, the different emotions are, se are segmented? I think that's really applicable here because the ones that they don't show, like confidence or patience, you can really build those up, and they're stronger and stronger the more you use them. The more confidence you have to call sellers, the patience you have to, you know, go work out every day or not honk the horn or have road rage or something like that. But then what... The ones that maybe they don't talk about um, are some negative ones like procrastination and self-doubt. Uh, those as well can grow as much as you use them. Now, I should definitely clarify, it's not as if you're going to do something one time and build all the confidence that you're ever going to need. Uh, in fact, that's not the case at all. On this flight, I'm definitely going to review my notes. Uh, this is what I want to talk about mainly, try to get through all of this in about 20 minutes and then leave the rest of the time for Q&A. Right, made it to San Francisco, super excited. Who would have thought that mobile home investing would have taken me here? Um, one of the first examples of me being scared out of my mind and having to make a decision of, you know, do I want to keep doing this? Do I have the courage to do it? Uh, is this the right thing for me? Was when I first got started mobile home investing or really real estate investing in general. Uh, my first three months investing in real estate, I was knocking on doors. I had a, uh, this kind of uh, get rich quick thing from my roommate's shelf. Uh, it was a Ron LeGrand course, you know, how to buy properties without any money. So I read that all the way through. I absolutely loved it. Did all the things that Ron said to do, you know, knock on doors. This was back in the early 2000s when you could make money just cleaning a window in Florida and turning the property. But I couldn't get to my first deal. So three months in of knocking on doors, of going through all of my savings that I had at the time, mailing people, um, no deals came of it, making offers, talking with realtors. My first deal was a mobile home seller. They called me up. It was $8,000 they were asking. And I was so green, I didn't even know to ask if this was a mobile home. I'm like, you're like, I said, this is a four bedroom, two bath on a small lake for $8,000. So I got in my car and I remember frantically like, and right now you can see the, I don't know if you can see that. I have goosebumps right now because I'm thinking of you know, how excited I was, but not knowing what I was gonna do. I was in my very early 20s driving a, a beat up car. I looked 15 years old. I was living in my parents' house and I was supposed to help somebody two or three times my age this sweet woman. So I got, I, I was driving into the, into the park and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a mobile home park. So I drove into the park and right on the last street, I turned the corner and I can see where the home is. Uh, and I knew it was that one. And I just get this wave of nausea going through me. So I turned down my music. I had music kind of pumping me up at the time. And I just got this wave of nausea. I pulled over and I just threw up 
on the side of the road in this mobile home park. And I don't know if anybody saw me, but I saw myself and I, you know, closed the door and I turned down the or put down the little mirror and, you know, looked at myself and wiped my mouth off and just thought like, what should I do? You know, should I it's so easy just to go away and go back home to the comfort of home, uh, you know, where I knew what I was going to do. And then instead, I gathered myself and and I went and I went to the appointment and I helped the seller and I was scared out of my mind um, and I did it. It was a fantastic deal and it opened my eyes up to the possibility uh, of investing. Um, so it was amazing and that was, uh, I sold it one time on payments for the high 20s and then I got it back and I sold it for the low 30s and then again for the high 30s. So just a great deal but it could have all been over if I just would have went back home or got scared or didn't trust myself. All right, I'm getting close to where my rental car is. I'm gonna go see some of San Francisco's finest things to do. I kind of gained uh, two hours coming from Central Time over to Pacific Time, so I'm gonna go see some of the sites and maybe get to bed kind of early for anticipation of tomorrow, and uh, we'll end the video right here today and catch up tomorrow. All right, so I just parked. It's about seven in the morning. I just found the event center. It's this really cool building. And uh, past there, you can see the awesome water. It's just some little lake. But uh, I'd say my nervousness level right now is about a 3 uh, out of 10, which uh, is crazy because I'm not really nervous. Like, it's just my body, you know, making me feel queasy. I'm not hungry. But I know logically, you know, what I need to say, what I need to do. I'm feeling really comfortable about it. But, like, inside me, uh, definitely yeah, three, a 3 out of 10. So I'll keep you posted with that. And let's check... Look at this view here, if you can see it, when you come around the corner. Cool, how amazing is that? California, I don't know if those are mountains or just foothills, this cool lake. Awesome. <laughs> look at this venue I'm in right now. It's just uh, networking time, but look at this place. Taking a walk right now. It is lunch break. My new friend Ryan here. Hello. We're going to grab a drink, take some edge off these nerves. I'd say out of a 10, I'm probably at a 4 right now. Again, my mind is somewhat clear. My body is just scared. You know like what I mean? Like I, There's butterflies, but I know what I'm going to talk about. You're going to be fine. Once, so I know, once the adrenaline hits, you'll feel good. All right. So far, really, really good talks. Everyone today has been great. They've yeah. been pretty good. Small man. house people, which is crazy. They're so expensive. And then they're getting like little, uh, what you call them, villages? Yeah. Of the, tiny the, homes. The tiny homes. That was awesome. Always network when you come to these kind of events. Ryan here, who knew that he was an underground musician? Look at this. South by Southwest famous. That's it. Just never know. You got to meet people and say hi. Thank you. The speaker is wrapping up now. I'm on about five minutes. Nervousness level out of five out of ten. Acting a lot cooler than I am. If you bought a mobile home, please welcome to the stage, John Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Heck yeah. All right, let me put this down. One hour later. Hope that that helped and made sense. Come see me after. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you. Fix it. Please we'll give them a good John Pedro. I'm putting all this knowledge on the guy. We're we're definitely nervous on that one, but let me get out of here before I talk. David, questions. So, so that was not as nerve-wracking as I thought it was. I know as soon as I started talking, I was able to move around, and I definitely felt my heart like beating out of my chest a little some, sometimes, but it was good. I mean, I was definitely prepared. I knew what I was talking about, and I want to um, talk about, there's a part two, uh, and this is something I haven't ever told uh, on any kind of video or podcast. You may have heard when I was talking about that, um, like when I, when I threw up on the side of the road, my mouth is still so dry. I was so nervous in that talk. My uh, mouth is just so parched right now. But a part two that I don't really talk about um, 
when I for that for that first deal that I did that mobile home in a park um, I went home that night and it was a great deal remember I, I bought it, it was 300 bucks a month 3,000 or 300 down and then for 10 for 10 months so it's a great deal but I knew I was sort of or I thought I was taking advantage of that woman. Like we, she, she asked eight thousand at first, which was a great deal, and then I knew she needed to sell, so I got her down to seven thousand, and then six thousand, and then. And I'm not a very good negotiator at that time. I just, you know, she was so motivated, and she had no other options, that I just kept pushing, and I didn't have the money, and I was, you know, what can I get this for? I'm a big bad investor, and I'm a tough guy, and so. I got it for the price I did, and when I went home that night, I was talking to my girlfriend at the time, and. And I cried in front of the mirror because if that was what real estate investing was going to be, taking advantage of people, like people that, you know, seem sweet, like I don't want to do that, like on a long-term basis, like I cried in front of the mirror. And, and I learned then that, you know, we can do deals when they're good, you know, know when they're good, know, you know, when to stop pushing. Now, I will say that this lady, to not feel too, too bad for her, she owed somebody money who bar who she bought the home from, like she owed them money, and she didn't pay them. So the person that she bought the home from came to see me after I bought it and was knocking on the door. I wasn't there, but she left me a note and said, you know, you owe me this much money because the person you bought it from never paid me. And it turns out that that previous seller the one, not mine, but the ladies who I bought it from, she didn't have a lien on the home. So I already put the home in my control and there was nothing she could do. It was already titled into my trust. So unfortunately that woman who sold the home just, you know, I guess, well, back for lack of a better term, I guess she learned a lesson. Um, and the person who I bought the home from never paid that person. And uh, anyway, so that was just a huge deal. So I hope that that made sense with the whole, you know, this whole video about overcoming fears um, and then, not taking advantage of people, like knowing when you have a good deal, don't be a hog, have good word of mouth reputation. Um, and that's been huge so far, like word of mouth reputation in this business. There's not a lot of us investors doing this. So good word of mouth reputation should definitely be a huge asset for you in this business. I hope uh, this was helpful. Please like or share the video. And uh, thanks for coming along with me. This has been kind of the first video I've done where you've just kind of followed me around as I do things and talk. So, man, this is so nice. This is Oakland. Downtown Oakland. I don't know what any of this is called, but hey, buddy. Oh my gosh, what amazing event. So I wanted to add this really quick to the end. Uh, I'm just going to my car to drop off some stuff and then I'm gonna go back up. There's a networking and a bar, so that'll be fun. The um, something I wanted to mention was, you know, on, on that first deal, if I didn't set the bar so high, your first deal, I, I wouldn't be in this business still. Like that first deal, I made my money back. I mean, the first person I had move in, I sold the home the first time for the, the in the 20s and then in the 30s and then right close to 40,000, but every time I got a down payment of $2500, I think the second one was like $1500. And I mean, I broke even immediately. So, if I didn't set the bar so high, the next deal I did could have been skinnier or I would have thought like, "Well, oh, I can't get them for this price." So, you know, I'm I'm just happy with what I can get. So, I say, you know, this whole video just kind of been passing, but really, if that first deal wasn't as good, I, you know, I don't know what I'd be doing because maybe I wouldn't want to continue with mobile homes. So anyway, I hope that that made sense and just kind of, you know, rounded out the, 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 the point. Um, so thanks so much for watching. Bye. Everywhere you look, everywhere you look, full house houses. Isn't that cool?